You can't. You can't conquer Krishna. You have to open your heart where Krishna wants to come and sit there. That's all. So humility is, is one of the essential keys that was mentioned by Lord Chaitanya as the feature of success. Actually, humiliation comes, seems to come even before humility. If I compare the, self the determinations I made with actually what I did and the results of that, the truth becomes clear. My determined effort to advance in Krishna consciousness, renouncing once and for all, all of my anarthas, my fences, and my petty material desires that have invaded my consciousness, they have not brought me success. I become painfully aware of my incapacity, overcome by things unrelated to Krishna, things I have chosen to indulge in. Now I find myself embarrassed. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prescribes humility as the path to pure chanting, for it will in time be followed by full dependence on Krishna. Humility is the natural result of a sincere desire to advance in Krishna consciousness. It's easy for those who are not serious about advancement to think that they are advancing quickly. They may even wonder why so many devotees struggle when Krishna consciousness is obvious, natural, and easy. These young souls conceive of devotional service as a series of activities rather than a full surrendering of the heart. This is the difference. Just by performing activities doesn't mean you're actually making advancement. The heart has to be submissive to the Lord. But who, those who actually want to love Krishna and purify their heart have to turn on the light in the room of their consciousness, a room that they discover that has not been cleaned since time immemorial. <laughs> and the thing about cleaning the heart is like cleaning a room that has never been cleaned is a lot of dust. It's like, it's about 300 miles worth of dust. And sometimes you go into a room that's dirty and it looks clean. It doesn't look so dirty. Maybe there's some surface dirt. But as you start cleaning, those of you who, who like to clean, you'll see that the more you clean, the more dust you find. Like, you could really clean this temple. It would take about two years, I think, maybe. <laughs> and that would just be the first floor. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had to throw that one in there. <laughs> but the temple is like a heart. The heart is also like the temple. And Krishna likes to sit, have likes clean temples. So you, when you're cleaning your heart, you're actually making a place for Krishna to sit. And he doesn't like to sit in a dirty heart, just like he doesn't like dirty temples. So when you clean, you're actually preparing Krishna for a seat. But the more you clean, the more you actually see the dirt. It's like, just like this room. You look at it, it doesn't look so bad. Just start cleaning. <laughs> You'll start seeing dirt everywhere. You can't find, you'll, it, is, it appears through the process of cleaning. So the heart is like that. Uh, usually a devotee who comes into Krishna consciousness and he practices for a year or two thinks, they're enthusiastic, they think, gee, you know, very soon I'll be a pure devotee. I'm right on the edge. I, I actually, maybe I even made it already. <laughs> Well, that's called PDS, pure devotee syndrome. <laughs> it's a sickness. And the more you practice, the more you realize how, how contaminated you are. And you see the prayers of Bhakti Vinod Thakur and the great Acharyas. They're saying, Jagai and Madai Pabhishta Lagishta. I mean, I, I'm lower than Jagai and Madai. I'm one who chants my name becomes sinful. One who hears my name loses all their pious credits. They're not just speaking some nice eulogies to impress people. They're feeling like that. Jai Shri Shri Radha Gopi Balavan Ki Jai. The point is that this is the nature of how bhakti works. The more you clean, the more dust you see. It's like that. So humility... Uh, is the is the broom for, uh, for humility is the light 
that allows the, the room of the holy name to clean nicely. If you try to clean in a dark room, it's pretty hard. Humility gives you the light to see the dark. Mm. So what is humility? That's a whole series of discussions that we can actually turn into a seminar. But humility really means that uh, Krishna is great and I'm small. <laughs> and Krishna is great and I'm small. And I'm dependent on Krishna for everything. That's humility. So then that's the seventh key is humility. We cannot control Krishna's response to our humble attempts to chant. Neither can we control what karma reactions he has arranged for our purification. We are completely dependent on his mercy. When we start to understand how dependent we are, we become humble. Now, humble doesn't cause one to become, what we say, uh, less enthusiastic. That's a false sense of humility. Sometimes people, they say, well, low self-esteem and humility is similar. No, low self-esteem is just a aberration of the mind not knowing who you are. You wanted to be the king of the world, you couldn't make it, so you feel bad about yourself. <laughs> That's called low self-esteem. <laughs> but you can't be king of the world because you're not, not your position. But who are you? You're eternally Krishna's servant. So when you know that, that means you, you actually understand your identity. And from that position of understanding your identity, you can take shelter of Krishna and become empowered. So your real humility actually inspires one to uh, become enthusiastic like that. So humility. What is the connection between, between humility and constant and inoffensive chanting? Humility may, makes us beg to serve the devotees our spiritual master, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu and Sri Sri Radha Krishna. As our aspiration grows, we will see how weak it is and we will want that treasure. We will soon realize that our only hope to attain our goal is to take shelter of the holy names. When the desire to serve Krishna is mixed with humility and full awareness of both our impurity and our inability, we will have found the key to taking shelter of Krishna's name. Even the ability to take shelter of Krishna's name uh, is difficult, but when we're humble, it becomes easy. <laughs> because humility allows Krishna's mercy to come through. Okay. So that's the seventh key. The eighth key is, let's go back here. And find out the eighth key is Namasraya. Seven Namasraya. So, what is Namasraya? Namasraya literally means finding shelter at the feet of the Holy Name. We are servants who need the shelter of our masters, especially of Nam Prabhu. If we actually wish to offer Seva, we must become humble and then seek shelter. Steadily and fully taking shelter of Krishna is the highest platform of steadiness. There's no way to circumvent it if we wish to reach the higher stage of bhakti. But few of us willingly choose humility, which is so bitter to the false ego. Still, humility is a reflection of this true self. We are not only servants, but insignificant servants eternally. So, Nam Asrayai is... Bhaktivinoda Kaur sings a song. If your mind is always absorbed in chanting the glories of Lord Krishna with great care, then by that process of Sri Krishna Kirtan you will attain transcendental qualifications. You should give up all false pride and always consider yourself to be worthless, destitute, and lower, more humble than a braid of grass. You should practice forgiveness like that of a tree and giving up violence towards other living beings. You should protect and maintain them. 
In the course of passing your life, you should never give anxiety to others, but rather do good to them while forgetting about your own happiness. When one has thus become a great soul, possessing all good qualities, one should abandon all desires for fame and honor and make one's heart humble. Knowing that Lord Krishna resides within all living creatures, one should with great respect constantly show honor to all beings. By possessing these four qualities, humility, mercifulness, respect towards others, and the renunciation of desires for prestige, one becomes virtuous.